Stay tuned. Ahead, I'll talk with the co-authors of the young adult novel, Louder Than Words. It's about the destructive power of high school rumors and the transformative power of art as protest. Teen Vogue called it the New Age Gossip Girl. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and this is Some Books Considered. About the authors, Ashley Woodfolk is a New York Times bestselling author whose previous young adult novels include The Beauty That Remains, When You Were Everything, Blackout, and the Fly Girl series. Lexi Underwood is an actress, singer, filmmaker, and changemaker. She's best known for her roles in Little Fires Everywhere, The First Lady, and Sneakerella. In 2018, she founded her production company, Ultimate Dreamer Productions, and made her directorial debut with the docu-short, We the Voices of Gen Z. Ashley and Lexi, welcome to Some Books Considered. Of course. Uh, Thank you for having us. Well, this is a book that you've co-written, so my first question is, how did that come about? How did the two of you come to collaborate on this book? Yeah. So um, (laughs) back in 2020, I was a part of Reese's Book Club um, and I did a couple of events for them. And the specific event um, was spotlighting a book called You Should See Me in a Crown. And um, that was by Leah Johnson and the book editor of that book, Maya Marlette, um, over at Scholastic. We started talking and I jokingly said that I wanted to write my own book. I was serious, but I didn't expect it to all happen like so soon. Um, <laughs> and so um, basically I had like a pitch, I had a concept and um, I pitched it to her and she loved it. And then because I'm a first time author, I thought that it would be fun um, to do a collaboration. And so I met with a couple of different people, but as soon as I met Ashley, it was just kind of a no brainer. We Everything aligned. Um, and so from then on, we, we got to work um, and we would take turns going back and forth writing um, and we were just always kind of like bouncing ideas off of each other but it was just such a fun process and collaboration. So you said you came into this with the concept so tell us about the inspiration behind this story. Uh, The inspiration behind this story is definitely, I would say, um, just what my life looked like when I was in high school and middle school, um, what my friends' lives looked like as well. Um, I was homeschooled throughout some of high school, but I could still really relate to the fact that, you know, I was kind of a people pleaser. Um, I was an overachiever as well. I was really hard on myself. Um, And I wanted to be perfect and excel in every aspect. Um, But the thing is, like, perfection doesn't exist. And so I found myself kind of beating myself up a lot. And there are so many peers and just, I feel like whether you are a millennial or Gen X, and um, that was your experience in high school, um, or you're actively in high school or going to high school right now, I feel like you can still kind of relate to that, um, relate to making mistakes and like kind of wanting to put it all behind you. Um, But the part about it is like, it's still a part of your story and you still have to acknowledge those mistakes and acknowledge the hurt that you face as well. Um, So it was just a lot of, a lot of based off of what I went through when I was uh, Jordan's age, just a couple of years ago, um, Ashley. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I had a very, this was one of the reasons why I think we clicked when it came to working on this project together is because I had a very similar high school experience where, um, I wanted to be perfect. I was definitely a people pleaser. I worked really hard and, and, you know, was an overachiever when it came to academics and, and extracurriculars and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but at the, at the same time, I had all these questions about, was I good enough? You know, was I doing enough? Um, if I did make a mistake, like how how big of a mistake, how, how would that mistake affect the rest of my life? Um, and I think when you're in high school, um, any bad thing that happens to you feels like forever, um, feels like it's the most defining moment and the most defining thing that will ever happen to you. Um, so I think that was the other reason why this book really hit home for me when I heard the concept. And as we sort of brainstormed the outline and deepened the characters and all of that kind of stuff, um, it, it just made sense for, for me to join the project. So it sounds like this character, Jordan, is definitely inspired by both of your life experiences. So tell us more about her and the story that readers are going to find in Louder Than Words. 
Yeah, so Jordan Jones is um, the new girl at Edgewood High. Um, and when she arrives, she is sort of um, hoping to reinvent herself. Um, but when she gets there, she realizes that a lot of people at the school already know who she is. And she comes to find that that is because there is a podcast, a gossip podcast at the school that's really popular. And she has been featured on that podcast very recently. And so um, initially she's really nervous because she's like, how do they know about my past? What do they know? How much do they know? And she's worried that she won't really have this opportunity to reinvent herself the way she wants to. Um, as time goes on, the podcast kind of reveals, starts to reveal more and more secrets about uh, different students at the school. Um, those secrets become more and more harmful. And so her, Jordan and her friends decide that they want to um, find out who the podcaster is, reveal them, because it's an anonymous podcast, um, in order to hopefully shut it down. I'm talking with Ashley Woodfolk and Lexi Underwood about Louder Than Words, and our conversation continues in a moment. If you're enjoying this discussion, please subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you'll know when I post new interviews. And thank you. Teen Vogue called Louder Than Words a New Age Gossip Girl. How do you feel about that comparison? I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I think that, um, well, I I loved Gossip Girl when I watched it. Um, I don't think that when we were writing the book, we were trying to, like, emulate yeah. that at all. Um, I think that just social media podcasts um, are just really big right now. Um, but I think for specifically, it's also kind of like spreading awareness of, like, how you use it and how – Talking about someone's life, talking about even just making things up, it may be funny to you and entertaining in the moment, but it actually really does have an effect on people. And it can be really harmful um, and detrimental to their mental health, which we also touch on um, as well, how bullying affects your mental health. Um, and I think that it's more just kind of like spreading awareness and, and hoping that if you post something, if you put something out in this world that you know, whether it's one person that sees it, 10 people that see it, or 100 people that see it, but it's going to have an impact on somebody in some way, shape, or form. So just being more mindful about what you put out in this world, I feel like is the biggest thing. But also just like, I think that spilling tea and gossip is so normalized. People will get on TikTok and they'll do a whole story time about, you know, what happened in their life. And so I think that it's just something that you can't help. Like you people are nosy. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't avoid it. Like yeah. you want to, you want to know the scoop. You want to know what's going on. But I think you also have to be mindful about what you're putting out there and the way in which you're, you're putting it out there. Um, and, so, yeah. and Gossip Girl was really great at sort of showing how gossip can be fun, but mm -hmm. also that it can be harmful. Yeah. And so I think our book does a similar thing with gossip and rumors. Um, so I think it's a really apt comparison. Yeah. The thing, though, compared to the pre-internet days is, yes, you could get together and gossip, but it's only going to go so far. Right. But now it goes online and literally it can be anywhere in the world. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's 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 definitely true. Um, we we definitely wanted to include social media as an aspect of it because I think I think when you're just sitting at home on your computer, you don't necessarily realize the impact that you can have or how far something can go. Um, and yeah, it doesn't matter how many followers you have. Any any moment or anything you say could spread really far, could go viral. Um, so it's important to just remember that. Um, and I think that was something that we wanted to to make, to call to attention um, in the novel as well. One of the key things in this novel is the role of art and activism. So tell us a bit about how that's demonstrated in the novel and why that was important to you to include. Yeah, I mean, I think that art is just such a powerful tool, um, especially when you use it as a form of activism. Um, I think that by the art that we put out in the world, whether it's like a painting or it is a show or a book, um, you want people to feel motivated to start important dialogues with their peers and you also want them to feel seen and heard. Um, and I think that by using art as a tool, it really helps get that message and that point across in the book. Um, it also has a bigger impact, I think, that you see it in the book where 
it immediately, you know, like catches people's eyes and even more public attention of people that aren't at that school. And I think that we see that in our everyday lives, whether it's like a repost on Instagram of a graphic that somebody created or it's an actual mural that they painted. Um, It is just so prominent to everything that's happening right now. And I think that especially because this book is set amongst Gen Zers, it was important that we also emulate what's going on in the real world right now um, in the book. Um, And so I think that there was no better way to do it than by using art. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also think that art as activism has historical significance. You know, Mm -hmm. this isn't this isn't the first time that 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 has been the case or that it has been used in that way. Um, So really bringing that aspect of the story to life made sense. Um, It's something that you saw all throughout the civil rights movement. It's something you saw during Me Too. It's something that you see during the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, It's just like omnipresent when it comes to activism. Um, So it made sense to be a part of a story that was so focused on finding your voice and making yourself heard. So I think you've touched on this in a number of different ways, but Besides being an engaging read, what do you hope that readers will take from the novel? Um, I think probably the biggest thing is that um, you're deserving of a second chance, Mm -hmm. that no mistake that you make can define you for the rest of your life, um, that redemption is possible. Um, and, And yeah, just that it gets better, I guess. Like nothing, nothing that happens now is forever. Yeah. We, none of us know what our futures are going to look like. And I think especially like high school and middle school can be challenging yet transformative years of your life, but it's not the entirety of it. Like there's still so much more life left to live. Um, And I think that specifically through seeing and reading Jordan's story, um, I hope that people have hope. I hope that people have faith and perseverance to continue to push through um, to get to the other end of the adversity because it's just a small thing um, that's a part of a completely like bigger picture, even if you can't see it in that moment. Yeah. I also think there's a difference between sort of having like just getting a second t- a second chance randomly mm-hmm. and like sort of earning that mm-hmm. second chance. And I think that Jordan really does um, attempt to right the wrongs that she's done in the yeah. past. And I think that's really important, too. I know I have just a few moments before I need to let you go, but I have a quick question for both of you. It's a question I like to ask authors of fiction, and it's this. If you could spend a day in real life with one of the characters from your novel, who would it be and why? Ooh. I feel like I know my answer. You know your answer? Yeah. You go and then I'll go. Then I'll I think that. I would pick Anton, who is oh. one of the side yeah. characters in this novel. Um, he is a photographer, but he's also just like a huge goofball. And he just seems like he would be fun to hang out with. Um, he's one of those people who has, you can tell he has like a heart of gold, um, even though he's always joking around. Um, and so I just think I, I would want him to show me some of his photography skills. Um, and I just think he would be fun to hang out with. Yeah. Um, I would really love, I have two. I can't choose. <laughs> either between Mila or Scarlett. Um, I really love Scarlett, though, I must say, just because she is so cool and she's so mysterious. Yeah. <laughs> and she just seems like the type of person that I would love to hang out with. Um, so I would say Scarlett. I like Scarlett, too. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> That's what I love about asking this question is often it's not the main character because as writers, you feel like you've spent time with that character. But then there's these other people you'd like to learn more about. That's true. Yeah. Well, to learn more about those characters and Jordan, the novel is Louder Than Words by Ashley Woodfolk and Lexi Underwood. Ashley and Lexi, thank you for talking with me today. Thank Thank you you for having us. Yes. Have a great rest of your day. If you'd like to purchase Louder Than Words, I've placed a link for you in the description below. And if you'd like to see more videos about books and their authors and a wide variety of topics, be sure to subscribe, like, and click on the bell to be notified about future programs. I'm Dan Skinner. Thank you for watching this edition of Some Books Considered. <laughs>